I would I would do a thing where like if if I was trying to do something super heroic like that and make the environment play into the the encounter and stuff, I would take something like this where the where if if you have a dwarf in your party and you're you're exploring his ancestor's tomb or something like that and the monster is coming, I'd say right, uh, make a you know dwarf make a a, a charisma check or something like that Original. you know and if he, uh, and if he rolls high, I'd be like okay. You have advantage on attack rolls versus enemies for the next minute because you're in a tomb of your ancestors and there's no way you're dying in a tomb of your ancestors your people built this place and then just yeah. let them go ham on all the monsters yeah that come in, you know? oh god that, that, that's that'd be such a great moment for a character as well just, yeah uh, I, I love giving moments like that to my players and if the if the environment um is is something that can provide that uh that, that's that's just that's just the icing on the cake really mm-hmm uh, there's also some other ones here I was looking at as well. Um, though that's the emotional stuff, which I think again, super good for roleplay stuff. It doesn't have to be mechanical. I just think you could be in an environment where, uh, you know, uh, take the sorrow one for example. It happens in ruins and swamps. Uh, you could uh, and overwhelms creatures with sobbing and confessions of regret. That's that's the one for all those edge lord players who are like, I had to kill my parents when I was ten years old. Like. They would confess to this stuff, and they would. Whereas they're normally the character who sits in the corner and is quiet about everything. Maybe, maybe the environment for, forces them to bring all that to the surface, and they they talk about their regrets. And now, now you're like, oh, we have actual character development for the character that normally doesn't speak because he's basically uh, Sasuke. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like uh, being affected by Wonder Woman's lasso of truth. I, I was thinking about that a minute ago when I was when, uh, just uh, Aquaman there and turned into Wonder Woman, going, and you. Oh my god, you're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Terrible movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but you know what? I, I have you seen you seen, seen, seen Snyder Cut? Let's not get into it. <laughs> I'm not gonna do a Snyder thing. I won't do a Snyder thing this week. I'm just no, curious if you're No, the I haven't because I don't want to give that I don't want to give that man four hours of my time. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. And also uh, I, yeah. I find yeah. the, I find the four to three thing really pantsy. The witch? The, do you know the words like this film is presented in four to three aspect ratio to preserve the artistic vision of Zack Snyder? Well, that, that's that's just a that's a filmmaking nerd thing. It, uh, no, I just I just find it very pantsy, and I'm just like, no, go away, stop. You you don't you fundamentally don't understand the characters you're making movies about. Stop. <laughs> I mean, basically, I mean, like I've heard I've heard it's better. I've heard it's more enjoyable. But the thing is, I think I've heard that mostly from people who are already Zack Snyder fans. And I, I, I think he has a particular type of movie that people can get behind, and if you like it, great. It's just not for me, and it's definitely not for me when you're taking someone like Batman and making them bramble across the ground Connor, to grab their Connor, grappling Connor, Connor, Connor. Connor. I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry. Just breath in, breath out. It's all fine. But yeah, no, uh, it's. I've, I've heard it's better as a film. You know, in that was term... a genuine accident. Yeah, it, <laughs> I, I did not mean that. Sorry. It, it, no, you're all good. I could just see. I could see. I could see us turning a corner there, and I, I was, just wanted to. I was glazing over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I could see us turning a corner. But yeah, no. From whatever, like as a film, it works better as a film. But it is not a better. Like, like it's it's a better film than something that's split between two different people's vision. That's I, that's what I. I, th I think as well. Like two things give the Snyder Cut an advantage, and again, I haven't seen it, but two things give it an advantage over. The original movie that came out one it's four hours long you can tell a lot more story in four hours than you can in two hours you know and two zach had the benefit of hindsight where he's already seen the failures that have happened what yeah so i think also hindsight is a thing because zach had the benefit of seeing the other movie come out seeing what people didn't like and yeah. then avoiding those mistakes as a result that's all i'm going to say about it uh magical, on. magical environments here <laughs> Magical environment. <laughs> we're, um, we're gonna get like a reputation for just like we're supposed to talk with Dean. All we do is rip on Zack Snyder. <laughs> I man, I swear to God, the day Zack Snyder tweets me and goes, "Hey, cut it out! I'm gonna, I'm gonna die with happiness. I will die with happiness." Oh, I think he actually seems like a super nice dude. Apparently, he's an absolutely lovely human. Yeah, he's meant to be really nice. I, yeah, and I, I love Three Hundred. I just don't like how he handles Batman and Superman. Mm -hmm. Anyway, moving on. Um...